This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I decimate a model into quads so it's easier to rig and animate? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have a Dynameshed model here loaded in. This was just created with an extract process, and then Dynameshed, and then detailed a little bit. So the question is asking about decimating a model into quads. So inside of ZBrush, we have a plugin called Decimation Master, and this will allow you to take your model and reduce the polygon count. But when it does this, it's going to give you a version of the mesh that consists of entirely triangles. So this is great for 3D printing and also reducing file sizes of meshes for map baking, but it doesn't work all that well for animation or rigging. So Decimation Master is always going to generate triangles, so it's never going to give you quads. However, inside of ZBrush, there is a function called ZRemesher, which will allow you to remesh your model, and it's going to give you quads and a mesh that will be able to be easily rigged and animated. So I'm gonna go over here to the main tool here, and this is the Dynameshed version of this model here. So I'm just gonna go through the process of taking this mesh and ZRemeshing it, to generate a lower resolution version of it that can then be animated or rigged. So I'm just gonna duplicate this file over here. So I have the original and a duplicate. So I'm coming to the subtool palette over here and just click duplicate. And now I'm just gonna select that new mesh there. And then in the tool palette here, I'm gonna go to the geometry area and I'm gonna open up the ZRemesher tab. Now in the ZRemesher tab here, there are a few options you can choose from. So if you have polygrouping on your mesh, it's highly recommended that you keep groups active. And this will go through and it's going to look at that grouping and it's gonna establish some clean lines for you. So this model here has poly painting, so I'm just gonna turn that off. And if I turn on my poly frames and disable line, you can see I have some different polygrouping going on here. So I have a polygroup for the outer side and a polygrouping around the edges and a polygrouping in the center. So with this polygrouping established on this mesh already, in the geometry tab here, I'm just going to keep groups on. So after you have your model like so, we probably wanna set a target poly count. So I usually start around something around 15, and this is gonna give me a mesh with around 15,000 polys, and I'm gonna make sure I have adaptive turned on. And then I'm just gonna simply click ZRemesher. This is gonna go through and it's going to look at the model geometry, and it's going to generate a new mesh for me based on my model. So you can see that process has finished there, and if I turn on my polyframes, you can see this is the result I'm getting. Now, if you have symmetry active on your mesh, it's going to give you a symmetrical ZRemeshed version, so you can see I have this nice center line through here. Now, the first result of ZRemesher, it's still a little bit high in my polygon counts, so if you were to come through and try to skin this model to a bone structure, it would take a little while because it's just the amount of vertices the model has. So I'm gonna run ZRemesher again on this mesh. So I'm gonna come over here and disable adaptive this time, and I'm gonna turn on half. So it's gonna take the amount of points that I currently have, and it's going to give me a new result that's going to be half of what it currently is. I'm gonna come over here and click ZRemesher again, and now I'm going to get a version of the model with a little less polygons. So the process of ZRemeshing once and then continuing to ZRemesh to get a lower resolution model is very powerful. So this allows you to control how much geometry the mesh is going to receive. So this is probably still a little bit too high, so I'm just gonna keep half on and run it again. And I'm basically just looking for a version of the mesh here with you know, quads that are a little bit big here. So this looks pretty good. I could probably go down one more if I wanted to. Now, after I have this done, you're going to notice if I go back to my subtool palette here, that it's pretty close to the original mesh, but of course it's a lot lower topology and I also don't have any of that poly painting or any of the sculptural details on the mesh there. So ZRemesher is great for creating a base version of the model that I can now subdivide and then project stuff back onto. So the process to do this is fairly simple as well. So just make sure I have my version of the mesh here selected. I'm gonna come down here to the geometry tab and I'm just going to divide once. This is gonna divide that mesh up. And then I'm gonna make sure I have the ZRemesher model selected and I'm going to turn on the visibility for my original tool. So you can see now I have both these guys kind of overlapping here. So now I wanna start using the project function inside of ZBrush here to project the details back from my high resolution model 
onto the new Z remeshed model. So the projection options live underneath the subtool palette here in this project area. So I'm just going to open that up. And what I like to do is I like to set this distance to be 0.1. And I'm just going to click project all. Now you may get a little warning that's going to pop up like so. And this is just telling you that the model that you're projecting onto does not have polypane active. So when you do this process, it's not going to transfer any of the polypaining on your model. For this stage right here, for the first projection, that's okay. So I'm just going to click no, and this is just going to the project, and it's going to ignore the polypaining. So if I activate solo now, you can see now I have my Z-remeshed version of my model looking something like this. So I'm going to divide again now to add a little more detail there, and I'm just going to do that project all again. I'm going to get the pop-up again, just click no. And now you can see I'm starting to get those details projected onto this new Z-remeshed subdivided model. So now I can divide probably one more time here. That might be enough to get the resolution I need out of this. And then this time I'm going to activate poly painting. So I'm going to go to the subtool palette here. I'm just going to click the paintbrush icon here. So now this will enable poly painting on my Z-remeshed model. I can do that project all again. You can notice I'm not going to get that warning. That's going to tell me that the poly painting won't be projected. And when this is done processing, you're going to see now I have my model here with that poly painting on it. So you can just keep dividing and projecting until you get your mesh looking exactly how you want it to be. And pretty much with the projection options, you can capture all the detail on your original model. So I use projection quite a bit to transfer details from different parts of models onto other areas. So now that we have our details projected back to this mesh here, along with our poly painting, we now have this nice Z-remeshed model with subdivisions. So I can go all the way back down to subdivision one. This is our lower resolution version of the mesh here. Now I could export this out, have it be rigged and animated. And then after it's rigged, animated, or posed, I can bring it back in, I can subdivide it back up, and I'll get all those sculptural details back onto it with that new pose. This Z-remesh process is also handy for generating UVs. So if your original model is a DynaMesh, it may have millions of points, and plugins like the UV Master plugin right here won't be able to unwrap that million polygon model. So you can quickly come through and Z-remesh your model like so, project those details back, go back down to that subdivision one, now use the unwrap option, which is going to unwrap your mesh, then you can go back up, and then project that poly paint detail onto a texture map. So really handy functionality of using Z-Remesher to generate low resolution versions of your models and give you greater control on your meshes. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.